what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do is look at some symmetry in some of these polar graphs. And sometimes we can find a symmetry. It helps us to graph these uh, polar equations maybe a little bit quicker or with some fewer points. So let me show you three ideas or three tests for symmetry that we can find. Uh, one test that we have here is, is that we take our polar coordinates r and theta, and if we replace them with r and negative theta and produce the same equation, then we know we have a symmetry above or about the polar axis. And I'll show you an example here a little bit of kind of how that plays out, what that means. Um, likewise, in the second one right here, there's symmetry above among the theta equals pi halves or the y-axis if or when we replace r and theta with negative r and negative theta. And if we do that and we get the same equation, then we know we have symmetry with the y-axis or with the theta equals pi over 2 axis. And there's one last test for symmetry, and that's among the pole. That if we replace r with theta, if we replace r with a negative r, and we get the same equation, then we know we have symmetry about the pole. And so those three can help us graph some of these graphs maybe a little bit more efficiently and a little bit quicker and with fewer points. Now, a word of caution. You will find that sometimes a graph will not pass a particular symmetry test based on these ideas. That doesn't necessarily mean that the graph will not be symmetrical about that point. And so that's one little caveat that we'll have as we continue. So let's look at the graph r equals 1 minus cosine theta. And let's test the three symmetry points on that and see how that works out. So if I'm going to test it here with, to see if it's symmetrical about the polar axis, I'm going to write, I'm going to replace um, theta with negative theta. So here's my equation, r equals 1 minus cosine of theta, but I'm going to replace it with negative theta. And let's work that out. And if you remember cosine of negative theta, cosine was an odd or even function. It was an even function. So that cosine of negative theta is the same thing as r1 minus pos or, uh, the positive theta, cosine theta. And there we see is that's the same equation that I have to begin with. So I know that I have symmetry about the polar axis, which helps me reduce the number of points I could plot or should plot to get a good idea what the graph looks like. All right, let's look at the second idea for symmetry. We're going to replace r and theta with negative r and negative theta. So I have negative r equals 1 minus cosine of negative theta. Let's work that out. Negative r equals 1 minus cosine of theta, because remember cosine of theta is a positive function. Solve that for r. r equals cosine theta uh, minus 1. This equation is not the same as that equation. So we may not have symmetry about the, the, pi, the y equals x-axis or the theta equals pi 2. We might have symmetry. We don't know. We can't say for sure that we do. And then likewise, this last case for symmetry, replace r with negative r. So I have negative r equals 1 minus cosine theta. Solve that for r. r equals cosine theta minus 1. And once again, this is not the same equation as this one, so I can't say that there's definitely, definitely symmetry about the pole. And the pole is, again, the, the origin, 0, 0 in xy world, or that particular point at the beginning of the polar axis. All right, so let's take that information and let's begin to graph what this equation looks like. And again, best way to graph polar equations in polar world is to choose some thetas, and then find out their corresponding radius in our little bit of an xy table, but we have a theta r table. And so some of the ones we like to choose, I like to choose in increments of pi over 6 around the circle. I don't have to test any down here because I know that I have symmetry above uh, about the, uh, the x-axis or the polar axis, so I only have to do half the points. So let's choose 0, which is the first one. 1 minus cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1. 1 minus 1, so I have 0. So I have one point that I know with to begin with. Uh, if I choose pi over 6, 
one minus the cosine of pi over six. And I had these written down because I need to convert these over because one minus, this gives me 0.13. One minus the cosine of pi thirds. So if pi thirds was one on my table, I have 0.5. Well, I knew that because uh, cosine of one, uh, pi thirds is one half. One minus one half is one half. Um, the next point we want to do is pi over two. The cosine of pi over two is zero. One minus zero gives me a one. Two thirds pi. Uh, cosine of negative two, uh, or that becomes negative one half which produces a 1.1 minus a negative 0.5, adds in to be a positive 1.5, correct? And then 5, 6 pi. And 5, 6 pi is 1.87. And then let's look at pi all the way out there. So if I put a pi in there, uh, Cosine of pi is negative one. One minus a negative one produces a two. So there I have sufficient amount of points to start to get an idea of what this graph will look like. So here's my very poor attempt at a polar grid. Because uh, of the scale right here, I'm gonna count each concentric circle as a 0.5 radius. And I'm gonna make myself a little mo uh, well, 0.5, 1, 1.5, and a 2. So our first point is radius 0, theta 0, right here on the origin, or at the pole. Uh, on the pi 6 uh, terminal side, I can go out 1.3, and so 0.5, 1, 1.3, 1, 1.3, 2, 1, 1.5, right about there. Pi thirds, I can go out. Oh, that's not, sorry, sorry, folks. I was thinking 1.3, that's just a 0.3. That's way in here, isn't it? You guys caught that, I didn't, thank you. 1.3, somewhere around there. 0.5 is halfway right about there. On the pi halves, I'm out at one, which is there. Uh, Two thirds pi on that radius is 0.5, which is right there. One point on the five six, I am out one point eight seven, which is way out about there, and then pi is two. And then I'm starting to have a graph that looks a little like it's exploding a little bit. And then since we know it's symmetrical about the x-axis or the polar axis, I can continue on with those same points. Kind of get an idea where they're at. And so they're in orange. I have an idea of what that particular graph looks like. So again, we can use symmetry to help us shorten the number of points that we need to observe or need to plug in or calculate to get an idea of what some of these graphs could look like.